Good evening, page 48. Page 48. Oh, for a thousand tongues. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 48. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. The glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. Page 48 on the second. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of Thy name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bends our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of canceled yeah. sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean, his blood availed for me. Hear him, ye deaf, his praise ye dumb, your loosened tongues employ. Ye blind, behold, your Savior come, and leap ye lame for joy. Amen. I'll make this quick. I have a confession. I was born in South Bend. I was raised here. And then for eight years, we went to Wisconsin, and now we're back here, but I identify as a Floridian. <laughs> I, my bones are getting more, weaker or something, because it just gets colder every day. So even though I'm here, I want you to know, I don't belong here. I belong in... Floridian. What's the state bird? <laughs> You're not Mosquito. <laughs> Mosquito. State bird. As long as they have sand there and warmth. But it isn't all that warm there either. So welcome to, now they're saying more snow. We lose the snow, it rains. We went, I went to a preacher's meeting yesterday in Valpo, and we left here, it was 52. We got there, it was 32 just going that way, and it was, I didn't wear a coat, I figured it'd be warmer that way, going west. Ready to pray? Heavenly Father, we uh, realize that you are worth whatever we can do and more, and that that is cause to feel like we could never show you, give you, do anything to really magnify your worth but Lord we're doing the best we can tonight we want to sing and listen and pray and give and respond and just be willing to do whatever it is that you want it's as long as you're pleased we want you pleased Lord and we're glad that when Jesus came and he died that that pleased you and that satisfied you, so we want to live our lives like that. Thank you for this place, and thank you for what you teach us and what you use to make us the Christian you want us to be. Lord, work tonight in our hearts. Let's change our hearts, Lord. Help us to see what's really important. Help us just to be changed. You told Peter when you knew he'd deny you, you said, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, and you know there was a turnaround. You knew that something deep inside of him needed to happen. His mind was made up and he was going the wrong way. So, Lord, we just feel like we're the same. Just do something deep in us, Lord. Turn us, God, towards you all the way. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated.
Can we sing happy birthday to John? Today nope. is his nope. birthday. Nope. Yes. Nope. We need to honor him. For John Sheets, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you. I know he's awful happy I had, we did that. He looks just thrilled. <laughs> 42 in your hymnals, what a lovely name. Page 42. There's a name above all others, wonderful to hear, bringing hope and cheer. It's the lovely name of Jesus, evermore the same. What a lovely name. What name this name of Jesus reaching higher far than the brightest star sweeter than the songs they sing in heaven let the world proclaim what a lovely name how many of you that's new to you you've never sung that Okay, quite a few. Yeah, that's a, that's sort of a new one to us. On the last. Here we go. He, here we go. He returned in clouds of glory. Saints of every race shall behold his face. With him enter heaven city ever to acclaim what a lovely name what a lovely name this name of jesus reaching higher far than the brightest star sweeter than the songs they sing in heaven let the world proclaim what a lovely name. Sweeter than the songs they sing in heaven. Sweeter, that means he's worth more, right? Yeah. If you have your prayer list, would you please note on there a couple of things. John Utley is in bad shape. He had a bad fall. That, of course, is the Utley's son. You just... Put a star, pray hard for him. Donna Michelin, that is Gary, if you know Gary, that comes, his wife had a stroke. She's not doing all that well. Rex Harwood is having a couple of surgeries, a lot going on. He's having just some issues. And Rosamond is pretty much the same. Haven't heard anything about Ron and just been praying and waiting. Uh, just seeing how long I hold my breath. That helps me think. Does it help you? You hold your breath. Okay, ushers come. You you pray. Pray sincerely. Don't just pray because you have to or somebody needs it. Pray because the Lord can do something. How many of you believe the Lord can do something? Margaret's home. She, she's real tough. That's why she's not married. No man can handle her. So she, she watching this? Oh, no. Margaret John said that. I was repeating what John said. Um, she was just looking good. We just had a blast, you know. So I always shut the door because they shut it. Every time I'm there, they'll go, we're going to shut this door. Bazooka mouth, they call me. So we shut the door and talked and laughed. And she was supposed to go home at the end of the week. And they sent her home in a cab last night. They did. 
terrible, isn't it? Here, here, here. Here. Your birthday's today, as is Christie's. You're twice her age. <laughs> She's 41. You're 61. Plus. Plus. <laughs> Did your wife do anything special for you? This may be uh, have a doctor call me tomorrow. Oh, good. So I can't eat wood until Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> kind of goes with the territory, right? <laughs> but he had wow. a birthday breakfast. You did. You had a birthday breakfast. Birth, birth day. Where? Oh, that's good. Did he buy? Oh, it's even better. Did you get dessert? Excuse us. We'll be done in a minute. Okay. How's he doing? Good. Good. Steve, right? The only one you have left. Right? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for every year Every day you give us, but as the years go and we celebrate our years, we're thankful for your goodness. I'm thankful for John, how you've used him and how I know you still will use him. Bless him, strengthen him. Thank you, God, for the opportunity that we have to give. It isn't just, we're not paying a loan or paying a debt. We are offering you something some god maybe tonight i don't know but we tithe we are able to express to you we want it to be a, a like a sweet smelling offering we don't want it just to be money we want it to be an offering we want it to be special for you we want, as Paul said, they first gave of their selves. And so, Lord, we want that to be true, that we would give of ourselves. Thank you for your blessing on this church. And tonight, Lord, for those who maybe can't be here, be with them. Of course, we think of Margaret. Lord, we think of, of John Utley in horrible accident, falling off a ladder. We pray for his recovery we pray for all those things that are messed up to just be normal again and, and work in that so that the doctors say we can't explain it. Lord, we love it when you do that. We hear that. We don't hear it often enough. It seems like we hear it often. We'd like to hear it more because we pray. And so, Lord, we just bring him to you. We bring Ron Ritter and Rex. Donna Mitchell and we pray for their healing. So many, Lord, that we're asking you to save. They are uh, afflicted with the worst disease, sin. The wages of sin, you said, is death. And I pray that they will see the gift of God. Thank you, God. In my life, thank you for the gift of God. Speak to us tonight. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Page 45 in your hymnals, that beautiful name. Page 45, let's all stand, shall we? Yeah. 
beautiful name from sin has power to free us that beautiful name that wonderful name that matchless name is jesus how many of you don't know that one whoa a bunch well, you know what? You're learning some good songs because this is a good song. Second verse. I know of a name, a beautiful name, that unto a babe was given. The stars glittered bright throughout that glad night, and angels praised God in heaven. That beautiful name, that beautiful name, from sin has power to free us. That beautiful name, that wonderful name, that matchless name is Jesus. On the last, I love that blessed name. That wonderful name made higher than all in heaven was whispered, I know, in my heart long ago. To Jesus, my life, I've given that beautiful name, that beautiful name from sin has power to free us that beautiful name that wonderful name that matchless name is jesus Amen. thank you you may be seated pastor all about his name isn't it all about his name ephesians the fourth chapter, Ephesians, I, I was, this is one of those, I was going to do something different, and God must have brought your face to my mind, and he said, now I want you to, no, I don't know. Ephesians. Chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Let me read you two verses and you're going to follow with me, I hope. And then we're going to talk on the subject of how we poison ourselves. I would never drink poison. Did you ever drink something that wasn't right? Sour milk. Something that uh, wasn't meant to be ingested or swallowed. And it's in your mouth. You can immediately tell. That isn't something we want to do. And I just want to say before I read this. that it could be that we're poisoning ourselves and we don't know it. A person that drinks poison, I don't know that they know it. They may not know it. They may be poisoned and then it's too late. So I don't want it to be too late. So I want to try to help you and I. This isn't just for you, but it's not just for me. It's for us because this can affect more than just you. If you get the poison or drink the poison or poison yourself, it's going to affect someone else. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 31 and 32, says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. With all malice. And be kind. One to another. 
tender hearted, forgiving one another. And that means any one another, not the ones you choose. You ever hear someone say that? I've chosen not to forgive them. You don't have that right. You're not God. We are commanded to be kind, notice, one to another. Well, there's some people you say, I don't think deserve it. That's not up to you. That's not your call. We're supposed to be kind, one, see it? One to another, verse 32. Tenderhearted. We're supposed to be tenderhearted. One to another. Forgiving who? One another. No matter who they are, no matter what they do. And then he adds, it's bad enough that he, we're supposed to be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving to everyone. But then he, then he has the audacity to throw in this statement. Even as God. You know what I always say? I'm not God. But that doesn't work. Because I'm pretty sure from this pulpit is thundered out this principle. When you trust Christ, when you become a Christian, when you are born again, he comes in. So if God is living in me, I believe that. I don't know if you do. I do. If God is living in me, if God is living in me, then he can give me the power, the energy, the help, the strength, anything I need, all that I need, whatever I need. Verse 32, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. How we poison ourselves. Ready to pray? Father, how we need to see our own hearts you said they're deceitful, and so they're going to try to deceive us. So help us see if we have any poison in our own heart. We, we are so quick to point out poison in other people. But Lord, this is self-diagnosis night. Help us to see the poison that might be in our own heart. We don't want to. I sure don't want to. I want to believe, oh, there's no poison in my heart. Lord, it may be that it's there. I haven't heard anything. I'm, I'm, God, you and I know that this message is not a constraint on me because of something I heard or something I saw. I just believe it's you, Lord, and I, I, I want to be obedient to you. Might be for somebody watching. I don't know. But I know it's true and I know it can be true. And I know that it could be in my life and I won't even know it. Lord, work. Work even tonight. Work in this group. I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Notice verse 31, let all bitterness. You ever meet someone who's bitter? They're just, they're yucky to be around. Just makes you uncomfortable. You know, they're mad, they're just mad, and wham, them, and... You and I do not have the right to be bitter. God does, but I'm pretty sure he's not. I mean, you talk about the right to be bitter for all of sin comes short of the goal. We've sinned against God. You would think, uh, you know, one person sins against us, we get bitter. You imagine being God? Romans 3 says there's none that seek after him. He's God. He made us. We ought to be seeking after him. Boy, if anybody should be bitter, it's God. That's why Paul throws in in verse 32, even as God 
for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. I can't speak for God. But I know he forgave me. And I don't know if he wanted to, but I do know he did. I don't know if he wrestled with it. And I don't know if I'm a bigger sinner than you. And so God struggled more to forgive me. But I do know he forgave me. I don't know how he felt about it. I know when Jesus died, I, I, I know it looked like God was bitter. And he paid for our sin. He makes us, he creates us. Think of Adam and Eve. He makes them and gives them everything they need. He puts them in the garden. What do they do? They go to the very thing he told them not to. He commanded them. Genesis 2 says he commanded them. What, what do they, they go right to it. Adam's there. They sin against God. As one uh, Bible says, wherever it was by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. And so what does he do? He comes and he dies for us. Are you praying for someone that isn't saved, but they won't trust him? Don't you want to just shake them? And say, how dare you? Jesus died for you. I mean, people shouldn't have the option to say no. When Nicodemus said, I want to inherit eternal life, what did Jesus say? Except a man be born again. And then he told him, you must be born again. He loves us. And we ignore him. Someone said this, boy, this is so... So spot on. They said bitterness is like drinking rat poison and waiting for the rat to die. Don't be bitter. Don't, don't let yourself get bitter. I don't know if you've talked to him. I've talked to him. Someone who's got an ex. My dad called my mom names. My mom called my dad names. I said, I don't know if you forgot this, but if I was talking to my mom, I would say, that's my dad. Remember you married him. Remember you had me. I was talking to him, he and my dad badmouthed my mom. I said, you know, that's my mother. They didn't take that very well, but they always said, you're right. I responded, I know I'm right. So stop that. Because I know that if they keep on that way, it'll turn into bitterness. You know or you have. Don't, don't let that happen. Paul wrote to the Romans. He said in chapter 12, verse 18 and 19. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And then he said in the next verse, verse 19, Romans 12. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place under wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. We think if someone does us wrong, we have the right to bitter them back. So bitterness is supposed to be the cure for that problem. But, you know, I, I, I've been there. You know someone. The bitterness always hurts the person that's bitter. Oftentimes, the person that's bitter at, stay with me. The person that's bitter at doesn't even know it. Man, we replay it. We're all wound up, you know, drooling, ready to break something. Someone treats us wrong, we think we have a right to be bitter. And what happens is we actually decide 
that we are not going to forgive that person and we hold on to the hurt, we remind ourselves constantly of the wound. Did you ever scratch, ever have a wound, ever have something your parents said, quit picking at it. Doesn't heal. Got to let it go. Let it heal. It'll heal. Your body's an amazing instrument. If you get a cut, it'll heal. It knows how to heal. You pick it, it doesn't help it. Rubbing dirt in it doesn't help it. I always rub dirt. I mean, that's what I heard when I was a kid. You get a cut or something, you rub dirt in it. Bitterness has the power to destroy a person from within. That's poison. That's poison. Cain killed his brother Abel. Why? Because he was bitter. He was mad at God. He's consumed by what God said and the non-acceptance of his offering to the point of murdering his own brother. Man, and that's before you had soap operas? That's before you had all this junk in the world? I mean, there wasn't a television. There wasn't a billboard. There, he didn't even have a neighbor. There was something in him. Hey, there was something in him. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You, you, you can't sit there, oh, I won't do that. I, I. You don't even know your heart. Don't say that. Cain felt so sorry for himself that he dealt with it himself. How? By vengeance. Look at all the people are mad at cops. They're killing cops. They're killing it. Wrote, you, you, you pulled in front of me. What have we come to? A lot of people out there that are angry and notice these verses, let all bitterness and wrath and anger. Only God has a right to be mad. And when Paul wrote in Romans 12 about vengeance is mine. God said, vengeance is mine. That's God's. We, we have no right to deal with it. Six signs, six signs you might be bitter. You can write them down. Number one, you're bitter at someone if you get angry when you hear their name. You say, I don't clench my teeth. You do mentally. You hear that name. You don't forgive them. You get angry when you hear their name. Got it? Number two. There are six of them, so we got to move quickly. Six signs that you're bitter. The first one, you get angry when you hear their name. Number two. You get bitter when you keep replaying the experience over and over in your mind. Let it go. That's what he's saying in verse 31. Let all. That means let it go. Christ died for your sin. He didn't do one of them. We got to let some things go. They pulled in front of you. <laughs> Thank God that he, he saved you and he loves you. Don't bring the past into the present. Paul said, Philippians 3, forgetting those things that are behind. Man, when they've done it to you, you just say, I'm going to forgive them. You say, I can't. You can. God. Go to God. Get God's strength and power. You can. Number three. You know you're bitter. You get angry when you hear their name, number one. Number two, you keep replaying or you replay the experience over and over in your mind, that which happened. Number three, 
You know you're bitter when you want the other person to fail. That is the word, that's the, the point of malice. When he says in verse 31, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. That's what that means. If they'll just fail. Shame on you. Man, I don't want people thinking that about me. I can fail good enough without them. Can you? I can. I don't, I don't need, I need them to love me and pray for me. Help me. We, we hope that they'll fail. That's malice. Why, why would we do that? Hey, be kind. Verse 32, be kind one to another, tender-hearted. Number four. I'm not going to repeat them. I'll do it later if you need it. But number four, you know you're bitter if you repeat what they've done to other people. That's what clamor is. He said let, verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. Hey, it's one thing to be mad, but then you start telling other people so they'll get mad. That's clamor. Huh? Side up. Hey, you know what? And that happens. And you know, I'm, I'm sorry it happens, I, but I'm more sorry for the person that believes that junk and listens to that junk. I mean, don't you have enough baggage and train wrecks in your own life without hearing about other people and other things? Number five. You know you're bitter when you try to slander them. That's evil speaking. Evil speaking. You want to lower their reputation. You know what? I don't have to answer to you or anybody about my reputation. I have to answer to God. But I'm not here to lower your reputation. That's not my job. That's, that's, God will take care of that. I'm just to do right. So I'm supposed to be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving, even as God. And number six, I'll go through them just to help you. We got time. You're bitter if you get angry when you hear their name. Someone, that person. I got a call about a funeral on Friday. I said, of course I'll do it. Didn't know the family. It's always hard. People don't go to church. If they go to church, they got a preacher. So I know if they don't have a preacher, and here I come, you know, they're going to be very... So it, I called the son, and... He said, well, can you tell me how the service is going to go? I said, sure. He said, I've got the best thing I know of, and I'm going to share it with people, the, the Bible. And, I, then, and he goes, yeah, that sounds good. And I said, and there's a message in there. That's what I'm going to share. He goes, sounds great. I thought, wow. Then he goes, can I ask you a question? I thought, oh, no. And he said, do you, are you related? And he mentioned a cousin. I go, that's my cousin. He said, he's a pole bear. I'm thinking, oh, God. Listen to me, I want my family to hear the gospel. Sometimes they won't listen to me, but he has to listen to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, eh? He has to. You hear a name. What do you think? Since I heard that name, I thought when he said, are you related to so-and-so? Not bad things, hey. But things, you know, we, we associate when someone says a name, we, boom, there's things we kind of connect with that. You're bitter, you hear a name, you get angry. Number two, you're bitter if you replay the experience over and over in your mind. Think about something else, man. Meditate on the scripture. You can't think about that junk. That's just junk. What a mess. 
Number three, you're bitter if you want them to fail. That's malice. Number four, you're bitter if you repeat it to others. You tell others what they've done. That's clamor. That's clamor. Number five, you slander them. You damage what other people think about them. That's evil speaking. And number six, you're bitter if you keep complaining about it. Now here's a verse I hate, but we need it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. In everything, give thanks. For this, what is it? The will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God's will is to be thankful in everything. Here's the bad part. I could come up with the poison of bitterness, six things. But to cure it, I could only come up with two. Or maybe that's good. Let's cure it. Let's cure it. Two things. Number one, here's what you need to do. You, you may not need this now. Somebody does. You and I know, man, I'm thinking of people who I know are bitter. Someone asked me about my, it, I had mentioned it, my grandfather. Bitter. Over what? Couldn't catch fish. Got bitter. His problem wasn't fish. What do you do? What do we do? What if someone's bit? What do they need to do? What do you need to do? Number one, you need to ask God to show you if there's any bitterness in your heart. You don't always know that. Right? You don't, you don't always know. You don't, well, you know, hey, how you doing today? I think I got some bitterness in me. We don't say that. We don't know. Often we don't know. We've all been through that. You've had a bad situation. You've gone through something. And, you know, I, I mentioned things. I'm not bitter at those people. I, I'm just going to tell you the truth. I don't get bitter. I just think some of it is so stupid. I mean, I'm not going to waste my time dwelling on it because it just seems so crazy. Like, what in the world? So, I just, you know, love them and... Sometimes they come back and sometimes they call and go, you know what, that was really dumb or I really did it dumb. And, and I always respond pastorally, yeah. Man, that, I thought you were on drugs. You know, it's crazy. I see it now, I see it now. You can't make someone, listen, can't make someone see something. But you go to God and you say to him, God, there might be bitterness in my heart. I was bitter at my mom. You've heard me tell that story. She cheated on my dad. They divorced when I was 12. And I know she was cheating on my dad for five years. When I turned seven, my mom started cheating on my dad. And the more I dwelt on that, when I start putting everything together, I was red hot. I mean, I think part of the reason my mom was crying when I was talking to her because my breath was so hot. Listen to me. I was bitter. And I told her, I said, Mom, you have created bitterness in me. And we had it out. She cried. I cried. We're fine. I can't wait to see her. But it just, it just like, was killing me. Poison. I, I think you know this, but I'm going to say it. A deceitful heart. If the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? A, a deceitful heart can't see deceit. So that's why we have to go to God. Just beg God to show us. I don't like doing it, but I do it. 
Because it, it could happen. How do, we, how do we cure the poison, bitterness? Number one, we ask God to show us. Because a deceitful heart can't see deceit. Number two, we ask God to forgive us. Even as God. Aren't you glad God's forgiving? Isn't it great? They, and it's so simple, but... Man, isn't it great that when Jesus died, he paid for all the sins you're going to commit. Not just the ones you've committed, but he paid for all the sins you're going to commit. You know what that's called? Mercy. That's why the Bible says somebody, his mercy endureth forever. Margaret had in her room, one of the, I forget who it was, I hate to give credit to the wrong person, but someone gave her that. His mercies are new every morning. Lamentations. And I told her, I said, that, that verse, Lamentations 3, that verse is on a sticky note on my computer because I need to preach on that. That his mercies are new every morning. Great. It says, great is thy faithfulness. We need to ask God to forgive us. You're going to sin. You're going to fail. You're going to get bitter. You're, you're, you're going to clamor or, or commit malice or, or say something evil about someone. Go to God. And just cast that on God. Bury that in God. He can handle it. When you go to God and go, God, I got bitter about this. God doesn't go, how could you do that? He knew you were going to do it before you did it. Ask him for his grace. That's him giving you what you don't deserve. Just ask him for grace. Here's what we can't. Let, let me close. I know. I know. I get it. It's cold. That's a good excuse, isn't it, for quitting early? It's cold. Don't pretend. A couple of thoughts to close. Don't pretend that everything's okay. Hey, how you doing? You okay? Yep. You ever have someone that you're bitter at ask you that? Think about that now. It doesn't have to be a big thing. But it just kind of comes out, doesn't it? Huh? Doesn't it? You know how you know we hear their name, but sometimes we don't even want to look at them. And then they happen to say, are you, if, I'll do that, are you okay with me? And they lie to you or pretend and say, yeah, I'm good. Let's not do that, right? It's not worth it, is it? I mean, we're big boys and girls. And we're sinners. And we get bitter, don't we? We get upset. We want to look good. We don't want anybody getting the best of us. And, we, we don't, and we've got to be careful of that because that's just trying to protect us. And boy, I, I feel like, when, when, and I've, I've seen that and I sense that and I wish I could just say it and, you know, you hear someone who said something about you and you just want to go to them and go, you know what, man, you really need to deal with your bitterness because that's all it is. Isn't it interesting that this poison, we act like we would never do anything like that. So we treat them like we're perfect. How could you do this? Watch, watch. How could you do this to me? You've done it or you're going to do it. And I, I, I hate even saying you've done it because I know you have. Sometimes we do it, we don't even realize it. Don't pretend that everything's okay. A second thought. Just remember when you forgive, you're paying the price for the hurt. I don't want to be hurt. I don't, I don't like people talking about it. They talk about me enough. 
I got in trouble yesterday. Shouldn't have went. Went to a preacher's meeting. He said, stand up, introduce yourself. I'd never been there before. Stand up, introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from. Tell us what's going on in your church. Boy. I'm up towards the front. They start in the back. Everybody, yeah, we're having a missionary. We're having revival meetings. We're having a prayer meeting. We're having a ladies' banquet. We're having this, and they're going on and having this special day, and we're having this special push. And so I said, uh, Vito Ruli, Lakeside Baptist Church, Lakeville, Indiana. I said, every service we have is special. And then I sat down. (laughs) Boy, preachers are like finicky old women. Finally, one guy I hadn't seen since college was there. He got up. He said, I want to say something about Vito. (laughs) So I just want to say I'm so glad to see him. I have not seen him since college. He said it just was a blessing that I could see him. And I said, and? (laughs) He said, that's it. Good to see you, man. Glad you're here. And that was it. Christ paid for our sins so that he could forgive us because he knows that we're going to do things, say things. Some people get irritated. You know? Let me tell you what will cost you more. Cost you more if you don't forgive. Little things, isn't it amazing how little, little things we call it get under our skin. We just need to take that to God. You know, we're, we're fussing today about stuff, building me colors, and I, I'm, I'm just like, whatever. You know, I don't care. Just get us in there. You know, paint it all dark black. I mean, there's some, listen to me, there's some stuff that doesn't matter. It's not going to be dark black, don't worry. Some of you, I'm not coming, I'm not coming. Just that, don't worry, it's okay, we're okay. We just have to be careful that we don't let people and things and stuff and, <clears throat> you know, we have a special meeting every service. And uh, yeah, yeah, as you should. Same God. Just say to God tonight, if there's any poison in me, God, please show me. Get it out. Hey, we're Christians. We're a family. We're supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ. The world's going to get mad at us. They hate us. We're in the way. We make them, men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. So our light makes them look worse. Sorry. They're going to be offended and upset, touchy. You and I just got to keep pushing, going on. Loving God, just love God and say, God, if there's anything, and, and don't worry about Making someone bitter, you, you better make sure that you're not bitter. That, that's the first step. Let all, but he's saying there, let, get it out of you. Get it out, let all bitterness, get it out. Let it go. Push it overly. Pray with me, your head bowed, your eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we don't like to address this issue that someone, it makes us look weak, that someone could make us bitter. We don't like that we may have failed, gotten angry, said something we shouldn't say, 
wished something on someone. God, in, in the eyes of God, that's as good as doing it. Malice, wanting them to fail. And in the eyes of God, in the sight of God, that's as good as done. So God, help us to let all that go. Let all malice go. Clamor, uh, repeating it, talking about it. Complaining about it. Be kind, you said. Tenderhearted. Forgiving. Help that to be true of us with each other, no matter who it is, no matter what they do, that we would be kind, really kind, not pretend kind, real kindness, genuine kindness, sincere kindness, not just fake kindness, not pretending, oh, everything's okay, but kind and tender-hearted all the way in our heart, not just kind with our actions in our mouth, but in our heart, tender, tender to them, tender to how we treat them, forgiving them, even as God. And God forgave us for things we hadn't even committed yet. Help me to be so forgiving that I forgive my brothers and sisters even before it's committed. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Hopefully you'll take that test of those six things. Maybe they're there. Maybe one's there. Good. Get rid of it right away. The more you rack up, the harder it'll be, but take care of it. And then do what you have to. Ask God to show you if there's bitterness in your heart and ask him to forgive you. You know he will. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. You just want to give you a chance. This is for you. Preacher God, speak in my heart. Here's my hand, up and down, up and down. God speaking to my heart, up and down. Preacher, God speaking to my heart. God speaking to my heart. I, you know, we sometimes cause bitterness in someone. We don't know it. We ought to be able to go and say, look, maybe if we think we did, we need to say, man, if I've, if I've caused you to be bitter in any way, please forgive me. Maybe we need to be more Christian and go to those that have caused us to be bitter and say, I'm dealing with this. I want you to know. Heavenly Father, the world doesn't need Christians fussing with each other. The world doesn't need Christians bad-mouthing each other. We're not here to be better than another Christian. To look better. To pretend to be better. We're not here for that. We're here. So that we preach the gospel to every creature. Those of us that have the gospel ought to be thankful. Nothing else we can do for us to get to heaven. Okay, now it's up to us to make sure everybody hears the gospel. And not hear what we think about someone else or hear what they did to us or what we think they did or what they wanted to do. God, that just help us to let all that go. It just needs to happen. What a, what a mar that is. What a mess that causes in Christianity. Vengeance. God help us to, to be more Christian, to forgive, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us. Help us to be more like that, kind, tender hearted. Help us, Lord, please. 
I pray in Jesus' name, amen.